Please be advised that Little Miss Recap contains adult language. So what, what do you call your listeners? Backdoor friends. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Little Miss Recap, the podcast where I'm also terrified of all marine life. So for one th- not only do I have kind of the shape of Ed in common with myself, but I'm also terrified of marine life. So that's that's where I'm at. I am so honored to be with this morning Amanda Lipnack Radel, my uh what do I call you? My sauce to my meatball. Sauce to your meatball. And we have from Reality Gaze, the Matt Marr. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hi Matt. Am I am I uh Am I just what? So am I the noodle? Am I the spaghetti? Stephanie's my spaghetti. So you could be. Oh, you could be the Parmesan cheese. That little oh. bit of uh, the zhuzh, the zhuzh, but n- not the good kind. Because not the good kind. Because I'm from Oklahoma. It's that kind and that green can that kind of has the sawdust like, in it. That smells mm-hmm. like feet, but you still mm-hmm. love it. That's mm-hmm. me. The shaky yeah. cheese, as we call That's it me. in my house. Yeah, the shaky Which I cheese hate, but- that has sawdust in it. You know this. Oh, yeah. It actually has okay. sawdust in it for oh, real? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember when my, because my daddy was a contractor and built houses, and when he'd go see his carpenter friend, Bill Job, I'd always want pizza. Bill Job. There you go. <laughs> the smell of Bill Job made you the, want the Parmesan cheese. Bill Job. He's dead mm-hmm. now, but that's okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, that's One thing I, I have to say about you, Matt, is I'm really, I am so impressed by your ability to remember last names not just first names but you always come up with the last name as well well of people i knew 30 years ago if you want right. me to meet somebody i met yesterday i'm like your name's what what is it again it's something <laughs> really it's really exotic right and he's like it's sam oh okay oh right yeah. yes sam yeah. um sam yeah so yeah yeah i have to say i was scared of everything ed's scared of and i did not like that i'm scared of everything Anytime I have anything in common with Ed, I'm not happy. <sighs> I'm a Pisces too. I need to not Same. be scared of the ocean, but Same. I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very I'm a Libra. Simple. We know this. Yeah. Pisces um, this is why you and Poodle, because you and Poodle are both Libras. Yeah. It really is. I oh. uh, I'm terrified of birds. I know you guys have talked about this extensively. I yes. was attacked by a bird when I was five See, years old. We, we have discussed this. We mm-hmm. I, I think I was mm-hmm. five as well when my grandpa's rooster attacked me. <laughs> Birds are terrifying. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. my. My husband wants us to get a bird, and I'm like, nope. mm, 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 you can go visit mm, them at the pet store or at your parents. No, mm, I, I, no I, I, I maybe could have one of those that talk, but I just, I just know that they're gonna, they're going to, Im, uh, in imbu- be imbued with the spirit of poodle, and I can't be around <laughs> that that twenty four seven. I'm already at enough. I don't need someone bitching at me while I'm in my house cooking my therapy. <laughs> You're cooking that well, it's bird, it's bird. I don't need that. No, thank you. Your your bird would read you for filth all day, every day. All day. Rock, you look fat. Fat. And I'm like, Poodle no. as a pigeon might be the cartoon we all need. <laughs> <laughs> your 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 poodle bird sounds way too much like Chicken Jenny, though. Just saying. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, They're all the chicken same. Jenny. Bark, 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 bark. All right, so we are here today to talk 90 Day Last Resort, and Matt has agreed to join us because Poodle will not cover the show, correct? He's not. <laughs> he not will into not. It. But he is watching it now. He uh, said, "I'm not gonna watch. Mm-hmm, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. watch." And then once someone gets a yeast infection, we're all <laughs> leaning in. <laughs> yeah, you sick fuckers, you're here. <laughs> Just admit it. Well, I will say we were supposed to record a few weeks ago and I had a death in the family, so we had to postpone it. And I'm kind of, I'm not glad for the death, but I'm glad for the postponement postponement because this was a good episode. This was was a good episode. It was There's a lot of stuff to talk about in this episode, particularly for three people like us who love therapy. Yes. True. Yes. That's yeah. And I yeah. have to work through my love is blind rage that I'm still kind of simmering with uh, to, to kind of switch, context switch here because Amanda, not to get into it, but you like Izzy and I think he is the worst human on earth. So yeah, we're going to we, have this fight. What? We'll have this more, fight. more than Uche? I think Uche and Izzy are fighting for who's the worst. Wait, oh, what episode yeah. are you on? I just finished seven. So Izzy's worst... Then JP, mm. who critiques her makeup and says she looks like a basically a strumpet. Yes. 
Yes, because Izzy weaponizes therapy. I really believe that. Like we used to have, so I haven't been single in 17 years, but something in this motherfucker triggers me. So um, we used to have like a guy who would pretend to be the good guy. Do you know what I'm talking about? And mm-hmm. they were really like kind of evil. I feel like Uche kind mm-hmm. of is that vibe. But mm-hmm. now there's this whole crop of people who like, you know, they're just thrown around like, I'm mentally stable. I have worked on myself. I've done, and they out, really yeah. haven't. They just read no. memes on Instagram and TikTok yep. and they think they that's go to therapy. TikTok therapy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Or they listen to a Brene Brown podcast, one of them. Once. And that yeah, was one. it. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, I'm mentally stable. But he's not. He is a fuck boy. I cannot stand that guy. And he twists everything these women say. I do think he's a fuck boy. I do mm-hmm. think he's a fuck boy. Mm-hmm. He's lost your- and found. That's, That's a poodle about- move if I ever heard one. <laughs> True. Love, Love is Blind is what is great about that. And we're covering that show too um, on our RG+. Plus. But it does – I don't know what it is about Love is Blind, but something about it, it triggers everyone. Someone gets yes. triggered by someone we've dated, we're dating. We're, mm-hmm. It's just – and yeah. that's kind of the viralness of it. It's that it's – even though it's a reality show, it's there's something that speaks to who we are for people. I agree, it's, and there's always like this collective moment because of the way they drop it. Yeah. There's like two weeks where we're all in this together and we're exactly. all watching it. We're all talking. Oh, I can't believe that we're only going to have two weddings. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that I, is. I think we're only going to have one wedding. I think the well, no, they've shown two work. weddings. Right, they've previewed two weddings. I don't know if we're going to have two yeses, but we we there will at least be two people in dresses going down. Do you aisle. think at this moment that Stacy and Izzy will say yes to one another? Yes. No. Okay. Do you think Lydia and Milton will say yes to one another? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I think Lydia is bunny boiling adjacent. And I oh. kind of disagree. <laughs> no. Oh, Amy, I need, I want to hug you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we need to be held, girl. I the wrong Lydia, take. I always have the wrong take. Lydia, well, I do about the guys I date, so 100%. <laughs> um, uh, Lydia is batshit crazy. But she I is. think she's, she's going to boil your bunny. I don't yeah. disagree that she's crazy, but I think Uche has gaslit the fuck out of her. And this is uh, something I'm so True. tired of seeing with men. Like, True. they gaslight you and they manipulate you, and then you're like, oh, they're, she's crazy. Like, I he's got his own image. Yeah. Yeah, By his own admission, nice he guy, yeah. pulled her back in, pushed her away, pulled her back in, pushed her away. Like, but I think she was already. I think she was already. But what did you say? Boiling, but bunny, bo- bo- bunny, say it again. <laughs> bunny boiling, bunny, bunny boiling adjacent. <laughs> I think she was already that adjacent before she met Uche, and Maybe. then that just made it worse. I'm not saying she's going to go a full Glenn close, mm-hmm. but she's getting real close. She's getting, <laughs> getting close to the Glen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did there. She's getting real close to a little Glen close here because yeah, yeah. she's nuts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he's he's evil. Like Lydia's nuts. <sighs> he's Uche is evil. Lawyer. The messiest class. Yeah, law. Yeah, he's yeah, he's an intern. But I get it. JP JP triggers me more than anyone. So I get it. There's something about JP yes. that I yes. hate. Cannot stand. Just, Just the way he stared at her. Toxic masculinity. Fucking flags on everything. Like oh, he I owns just, patriotism. You didn't know that. Man? He he owns patriotism. <laughs> and I wrote. I said Jake said I don't know. I said no. He he's fucking boring. He has nothing interesting has nothing. about himself. So he has to put flags all over himself. He only ever talks about sports. Is the interesting thing. Like bleh. so that guy triggers me. Okay, so let's talk about Ninety Day Last Resort season one, episode eight. Our last one, last secret. I almost said our last secret. Oh, yeah. that, there's twelve episodes of this. Do we know? They said it goes till October thirtieth. So we have what three, four more. Yeah. So four there's more. twelve. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. And so, Sister Wives goes until January. So. That's because yeah. God loves us, and we've sat through a lot of brown parties <laughs> to get to this. Oh, wow. Before we jump into details, Matt, what are you thinking about the season? I love this. I mean, again, y'all fought me. Not y'all, but I mean, you sissies out there, you mm-hmm. listen. What, what do you call your listeners? Backdoor friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> there are two kinds of friends in this world, a front door friend and a back door back friend. friend. <laughs> These are their uh, back door friends. And it can, mean, it can mean you have an intimate friendship or you're into anal. We're okay. good for both. 
backdoor friend means something very different to me. You're welcome. All are welcome. Very different. Um, woo. Uh, okay, so sorry. She went somewhere. I'm here now. I, you know, so I love this season. I love this show. I feel like what they have done really well is, well, first of all, they got three really good therapists that actually mm -hmm. know what the fuck they're doing. We actually interviewed Petey and had a great, Jake is actually hundred percent going to contact her. He's like, I want to do a past life regression with her. He's, we heard the interview. It was great. So, but I also she, listened to him with Yara, her interview with Yara. Oh, podcast, I bet that Yara, Yara talked when I did meet her with Mary Payne, Yara talked all about Petey for like 15 mm. minutes and how much she loved her and she loved love the experiment and everything. Um, but so I appreciate that they have good therapists because a lot of these shows have the worst therapist ever. Um, you know, Looking at you married at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I also feel like this series is giving us cl either closure or it feels cathartic because mm -hmm. they're doing this intensive therapy and getting really personal. It's the stuff that I feel like a lot of the things we speculated as fans were now mm -hmm. finding, oh, that was true. We yeah. were oh, right. That's true. Yes. Like yes. Our gut was telling us something. It didn't make sense in their season. We felt like we say all the time, are we missing something here? And I mm -hmm. feel like Last Resort is giving us what we were missing. Now mm. I totally get why Kalini despises a Swalu with so much passion. So much. I mean, yes, she and Kalani are completely enmeshed and that's a whole other problem. Oh, but yes. but now we totally get why that's happening. The thing I said about the this show before it started was this was like the show no one asked for, but everyone wanted. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't 100%. know we wanted this. And if they could ditch HEA and just have this. Oh, 100%. Matt Sharp would have the happiest fan base on the planet. He would. Ooh. Remind me, Amanda, at the end of our recap, I'll ask Maddie who he would like to see on the next season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh. we, we, we've already workshopped who should be on <laughs> season okay, this two. Is great. Yeah. This is okay, great. So how we go through this usually is couple by couple. And I was assigned two couples and Amanda has the other two. And then we just kind of go through it. So well, actually, in this, I have three couples. But you have the lion's share. So what we did, Matt, is one of us took Angela and one of us took Ed because we felt it was too mean for one of us to have to do both oh. of them. So that's okay. where we split. I got stuck with Angela because I can do my cow. And right. yeah, mm -hmm. so we have a you little can, bit of them. You can do Michael, but you can't do it like Mary Payne. No, I cannot. No one can no do one can. Angela the way no, Mary Payne can. No, she does. I so, Angela doesn't trigger me, but I get why she does. Angela it. doesn't trigger me either. I'm fine. I, I actually, I have. I actually like her. I have actually really? defended her several times, and I said she's I think having she's, a good season on this. I think yes. she's one of these people that she really treats the people in her life very well in her circle. The problem becomes who's in her circle and who's worthy of it, and I feel like that's where she becomes problematic. Yeah, yeah, and she just shows her ass on TV. But anyway, yes, yes. okay, okay. So, so let's start with Ed and Liz because we have nothing for them. Yes, except scary okay. animals. So go ahead. Okay. So Ed and Liz take a retreat away from the island. They go to this marine life center. They're petting dolphins and stuff. Ed's terrified of all things in the ocean and bees, and so am I. And then Liz says she's thrilled that he chose this for her because he's scared of everything, and she knows like he's making this huge sacrifice. And at one point, is he petting a dolphin? Is that a dolphin? Or no, I think it's, no, it's a shark. Because he was shark. I Okay. Big Ed is braver than me. I don't think I would ever even put my hand on the other side. No, thank you. What are you feeling about Big Ed this season, Mally? Small Ed is Yara loves small to call Ed. Him. Sorry, uh, I know I love that. I I normally I normally don't watch their stuff, right. so I haven't really clued in. Um, I did go back because so many people talked about it. I did go back and watch parts, not all of his past life regression thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which Petey said was actually, you know, when they do those, she said, those are like four hours. I know. Mm -hmm. So we don't see the whole thing. Um, here's the deal with this is that it, I'm not like even seeing this. Like I do feel like he's trying to change. I do too. I do too. I, I, I and I, I hope that, like, I hope that for, I hope someone can change. I, sure. mm -hmm. I, um, <laughs> I got very drunk at that TLC party and, <laughs> and I, 
and I um and I didn't mean to, but I was in a corner and I was having to talk to Bilal. And oh, I, didn't, God. I, I didn't say this on our show because Jake said, I don't want you to say this. So I'm going to say it. It would drop in reality gaze T on yours. Yes. I flat out. Because Mary Payne said, you said he got a bad edit. I can't believe you said that to him. I said, no. What I said to him, I said, I said, you, I guess you got a bad edit. I said, but everybody at this party. Everyone was telling me that Bilal is the nicest guy there. And I know mm. a narcissist. I know how a narcissist mm-hmm. makes people mm-hmm. feel. Sure. So I took that into consideration. But I told him, I said, everybody here is saying you're nice. But, God, you came off like an asshole so much on the show. You need to fix that. So I didn't tell him that. <laughs> Hold on. And he kind of looked at me. I said it in a very sweet southern like way that made him feel blessed maybe bless your heart like i told he wasn't saying he was a dickhead but yeah. I, did t- I was like you need to fix this so i don't know <laughs> okay. Okay. So, but i feel like the only thing maybe that could make w- is that we've got these people like ed and angela that are having some profound because they do how long were they here two weeks and it was like two weeks two weeks and Petey said that it was like therapy. Like they got up in the morning and they had like 10 hours every freaking day. Mm -hmm. I wish that they were telling us what day we're on as we're going through this. Oh yeah. That Uh, would be super helpful to understand just how far into the process they are. Cause I mean, we'll talk about it, but in this episode, finally Molly and Kelly call it done, which we knew where they were done. So from the jump, but I would like to know, are they done? So on day four or on day 12? Right. Yes. Like how much work happened for them yeah. to get there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With with Dr. McCotty, we'll get to with that. With Dr. McCotty, yeah. Okay, so they also he is so um, hot. Jesus. Ed and Liz sit down and they have a chat. And he says, um, they're talking about the progress they need done. And she's like, I'm being selfish. I know that, but I want to see more from you. I know you're making progress, but you know, the 72 hours of you being an enlightened human isn't enough for me. I need to, you know, I need 72 more hours. (laughs) And he says, well, we need to work on trust. So I'm going to come clean with you. And then he tells Liz about Jovi's idea with the strip club and how they asked all the men not to tell all the women. And he says, I'm not going, I'm 57 years old and I don't need to be looking at boobs. He says, I like yours. And Liz now wonders, does she have to tell the other women? No, you don't, Liz. Mm-mm. Not your problem. Mm-mm. She's going to. She's going to. Because they've had this sisterhood. Mm-hmm. She's going to. Um, this, is, these, this is the only time where I feel like this is a little producer initiated, this whole plot point. Yeah. Oh, Although, yeah. I don't mean to keep saying like in a brag way at this party, but I will say Jovi just talked about strippers when we did meet him. <laughs> The thing. So it's on I'm brand. I'm a Jovi apologist. I'm a Jovi apologist. <laughs> so hey, I, Amy's got a little little Jovi, little thing for Jovi, little bit. I, be, I gotta say, he's really good looking in real life. Mm. He's he's short. He's not my type physically, which is so weird for me to be. He's very Every handsome. Every time in real Poodle life. says somebody's hot, I'm like, yes, he is. Poodle and I are the same soul. I think oh. when it's you both well, like your Libras, you're like, both Libras. You like dirty people. That's we need why. our humans with a little bit of bad in them. <laughs> Enough good no. that we don't go to jail yeah. or anything. You yeah. know what I mean? I get it. But Jovi has that little bit of a, we need to tame that wild spirit. A little bit. No, I get it. You know who mm-hmm. actually was actually good looking? And it was, was Gino. That was shocking. Really? <gasps> Gino what? was actually, there was something kind of very attractive about it. Jake said it too. Whoa. And Jackson was like, I tell you, I you so beautiful. <laughs> you can't <attack> me. Gino, <laughs> Gino, I need your semen. The fact that you did that to her brought me so much joy. Oh, it was great. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't. Sorry, even. I won't keep talking about that part. But okay. no, but I so but now I kind of believe I'm like, are these people really like the sometimes you think people aren't the way they are on TV? Right. And so when I watch this now with Ed, I, I am coming back to our segment. I was like, fuck, is this fake head? Are you actually changing? Uh I mean I can't tell if he's paying lip service to the change. Right. Or if there's genuine change. Like is he learning the words he should say in therapy? Nothing is authentic with him. No, that he's parroting it back. Mm -hmm. Or is there some deep change within him? I mean, I think this if this man were to change, we're talking 
a lot of inpatient therapy. We're talking a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work and probably some pharmaceutical assistance and all sorts of things for him. Clockwork oranging. Maybe a little lobotomy, who knows, whatever has to happen. Clockwork oranging and making him watch his season with Rose. Oh God. But he's not going to see anything wrong with it. He doesn't see anything wrong with the way he treated her. She did Um, him wrong. So I just want to say, if you want a, a perspective on Ed and a little deeper dive, listen to Reality Gay's interview with uh, Dr. P.D. Silvera. It was great. And she she Plus. really did talk about Ed quite a bit and his past life regression and stuff like yeah. that. It was, it was a really great episode. Thanks. Okay. So, um, Amanda, who do you have for us? Let's get Michael and Angela out of the way because they're really short. Michael. So it's their anniversary. And of course... We have to have a parade of Angela trying on the worst bathing suits God ever created. They're, not They're just bad. And if the tackiest what? U.S. flag suit. And- Where did she get these? Oh. Fashion bug. No, no, that, no fashion, fashion bug in 1987 good. before it went out of business. <laughs> They're all coming like- back. There's an Esprit store now at the Grove. <gasps> Oh, oh, that that makes my '80s girl heart just. Oh, sing. it's all coming. Back. I saw an ad for OP the other day. If oh, you can wow. get a Benetton right next to that, oh, I would geez. lose my mind. Uh, okay. Probably. It's yeah, that would be amazing. Um, I'm going to say she got them at the low budget Sheen. Mm. Like Sheen is already low budget and these mm. are one step down. They're really bad. At, but what I do like is she's really looking for ways to keep their sexual connection going mm-hmm. across a continent. And I think they're actually getting some tips for doing that because I think the one thing these two do well is bang. Oh, um, I don't, I don't I guess think so. about it. Michael, Michael, Michael. Oh, no. And then when she has an orgasm, she just blows out cigarette smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Even if she hasn't been smoking, it's down in there somewhere. It's um, in there. It's in there. <laughs> can you just imagine how awful her breath is? Mm. It's awful. <laughs> so then... Then they do, they go outside so she can have a little anniversary thing. She puts on this horrific braided ponytail in an effort to be more did. Nigerian. She said, I'm like, oh, honey, stop. She stop. did like a Moira, Moira Rose situation where she had all her wigs laid out on the bed. Like this one is Tammy and this one no. is Lisa. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Nothing wrong awful. with that. Nothing wrong. Mm. I have Nothing no problem with that. wigs, but these were not good wigs. No. These are like the kind you buy at the train station for $10. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And they go outside. She does this little dance. We can see her Spanx. That's a, mm-hmm. always a problem. Michael mm-hmm. does a dance. They flirt. And I just can't with them. But I will say, Angela does seem to be taking this therapy thing seriously. Well, like, you made her cooter tingle. You missed that important made her, uh, nah. I was trying to. Oh, that. Yeah. Nah. She did make You made my cooter, cooter tingle. tingle. Michael. Michael. But, like, she's learning. She has triggers. Michael, she's learning. I think I felt a drop. It's been so dry down oh, there. No. Just like, say, it. Well, hold on. I think it's a little. Hold on. Oh, hold my, on. My one egg. My one egg is getting really, really oh, excited God. in there. That one egg is in there. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Somebody, let me get some semen on me. <laughs> anybody got? Anybody got any bacon? I'm hungry in here. That that one egg has like a trach. Oh, it's like yeah, esophageal cancer. <laughs> like, and anyone here going to give me some semen? Please. Please, guy, guy, I want a Jimmy Dean sausage patty, please. Anyway. <laughs> oh, God bless. Oh. It's not good. It is <laughs> not good. Okay, we're already crying. We've destroyed a- Amy, Amanda. We destroyed I, we, her. We broke her, and I'm here trying we to be serious her. about Angela and therapy, and you two are going off the fucking rails. I need right, you to okay. come back. Okay. All right. <laughs> but, no, like, she is, she's learning something. I actually feel like if if any between Ed and, and Angela for sure, if anyone can be improved with therapy, it's Angela more than Ed. I feel like there's potential I, well, in Angela. And Angela's like to learn something. The potential. therapist says the the slightest, most obvious thing to Angela, and she really internalizes it. So I feel like if she did kind of take up therapy, she would do really well with it. Yes. She, well, and I'm going to tell you something that's good. The first thing that we saw, this I think was in episode two or three, when Angela was talking about seeing Kalani talk to Asuela, and she said, well, if she can forgive him, maybe I can forgive mm-hmm. Michael. And I'm going to tell you all this right now. It's really scary to go, but group therapy is 100%. incredible. It, mm-hmm. I used to say when I was doing I 
I love, I started doing group therapy at the end of my trainingship and I went, oh fuck, this is what I want to do. I don't want to sit an individual and just, because it takes, somebody comes to me for individual therapy or they used to, I don't practice anymore, but um, it takes me six months to just mm -hmm. make them feel like they're not stupid for thinking that and they're not alone. Mm -hmm. I can do that in five minutes in group therapy. Right. Five minutes. It's such yeah. a, so for people that are like, and it's cheaper, you pay less because mm -hmm. yep. so people that are like, I don't know, I can't do individual therapy. It takes so long. I don't have years. Go to fucking group therapy. I'm telling you, it's uh, it's the best. It's the best. Yeah. yeah, I went through a period right around the time I turned 40 where I like hit rock bottom and I really thought I was toxic. Like I thought I was the worst person on the planet. It was it was dark up in here. And I was working actually with a coach and a therapist. My coach said to me, she's like, can you go to like an AA meeting, an NA meeting, something like that. I just want you to sit in a room where you hear other people are struggling. Mm -hmm. I want you to sit in a room where you hear that you are not the only one who has these thoughts and these issues. Mm -hmm. And it was life-changing for me. Yes. Go, oh, I'm not alone. Yeah. yeah. And also I'm hearing other people's stories that are way worse. So maybe I'm not so bad yeah. at all. Well, no, you're doing Ed and Liz therapy. Our marriage yeah. is great compared I'm, to these weirdos. So I think, I I think a that's a lot touch. of the catalyst of why these people are, because they do this group therapy. I think they were having group, several group therapy every mm -hmm. day. So I think that's one reason anyway. Yeah, no, I agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. Angela and Michael. It's our anniversary. They've been married for three years. Michael's never getting to the U S I don't know why we keep bothering. I it's, I, it, I, I thought about this time. I went, is there an actual chance in hell Michael ever gets here? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know if he's here, right? In present time? No. Mm -mm. And as much as I do, I don't want to see him in Hazelhurst, Georgia. I don't mm. think that'll be good for him at all. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. With me no, screaming around. and me oh God. Um. Mm. So can we do Kelly and Molly real quick? Sure. Sure. We sure. don't have a lot of Yara and Jovi either. Yeah. We? So we're going to go through all mine quickly. And you're, okay. And then we'll end on Kalani and Asuelo. Okay. Actually, let's do yeah. Jovi and Yara first because they're quick. And then Molly and Kelly. My boy was, Jovi. Mm -hmm. Your boy Jovi. Mm -hmm. So they had sex therapy, which I thought was really interesting. because the and one we didn't thing get to see it. I know. I'm disappointed. Because the one thing we've thought that they do really well is bang. That, oh yeah. Do you want you know what? We have said that on the show too. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They may not be emotionally connected. They not, may not be intellectually connected, but these two know how to fuck and mm -hmm. it works. Except mm -hmm. apparently it's not working as well as we thought it apparently might. Apparently they don't. So well, I think she plays this little coy, like it's a game between them. But a little they, bit. when they did that board, did you read what was on Jovi's board? Oh yeah. 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 Jovi wants a blow job. And then he and wants then to start a missionary. Missionary. And then, and like then doggy. <laughs> and then more of a blowjob. And then Yara. And it was whited out before me. So was Yara comes that, before me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Which Sex was for Jovi. Very, I thought that was very nice. He wanted to yes. like make sure she was taken care of. Mm -hmm. I, I was actually surprised. <laughs> I love that they showed that on the board. I love mm -hmm. that they were talking in like... I love that we're not, we're getting specifics and this isn't just because these are the things like we laugh at it, but you know, there are people that are having sex and they're upset that their husband doesn't come inside them like Jasmine, you know, they're, they're, right. these are things that, I, and I appreciate that Yara really comes, she brought it up, but you could tell that like, even when they're doing it, Yara feels uncomfortable to do this, but she's yep. kind of pushing herself to do it. Mm -hmm, and I went, mm -hmm. I've seen people do this in a private therapy room and it's so hard for them. And the fact that she's doing this on a television show, television show yeah. yeah, I just love Yara. I just I love, love her. Too. I love her. I do too. And I love the fact that she's like, there's a cultural difference here. And I was not raised talking about these things. This is not something yeah. I'm comfortable with. Um, and I think they are in a space that a lot of men and women get into in that Men are ready to go and women need some time to settle in, to relax, particularly if they're like mothers and working mothers. They've got all these things yeah. going on. They're doing all the emotional labor for their family. Uh, Jovi, Jovi, I want Jovi. a massage, Jovi. <laughs> what she wants. She just wants like a couple cuddles. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can get to the bang. Oh, and also she would like him to stop jackrabbiting, which is a surprise to precisely nobody. Nothing. Nobody. Nobody. That, that Jovi's version is just. You know, the jackrabbit. I was thinking of the jackrabbit from Sex and the City where it broke Sarah <laughs> Jessica Parker's neck. 
Oh, yeah. And he says at some point, like, you could get it anywhere. This is yeah. such a misogynist. You can get it anytime. Good I'll bet anytime. Yeah. Well, Women could just walk into a bar and anybody will fuck them. And, you know, we have to work hard at it. So it's like, it's so weird. It's such it's, a weird thing to think. I, I think, though, that comes from a place of Joe. I don't know if Jovi will ever admit this, but that comes from a place of feeling inadequate. Like, he always feels oh. like Yara's hotter than he is. Like, out he of the is. Way. She, she, she is, is out of his, his weight here, mm-hmm. but he feels that, and he has insecurity about that. That's why he's like, "Y'all, are, I don't want you to go get an apartment over there mm-hmm. in here because mm-hmm. then you're gonna find some hot you're paying guy." Right, <laughs> but, but interestingly, the thing is, she feels the opposite. Yes, yeah, because yeah. he was happens. in those beauty pageants with Miss Gwen. I want to know all about Miss Gwen putting oh. Jovi in beauty pageants. Well, she's gonna be on next episode. I know, like Mama Chat Jovi. Next episode, and I am yes. here for it. I'm oh, here for it. I love her. Love Miss mm-hmm. Gwen. Um, one thing, but so Matt, I was been saying all along, I love the way that Yara says therapy to therapy. The therapy. Therapy. We have to go to the therapy. Mm-hmm. Last week I went upstairs for my virtual therapy and I said to my husband, I have to go for the therapy now. <laughs> it's my favorite way to say therapy. <laughs> and he doesn't watch the show and he's just going, what the fuck? No, he doing? does watch this. Oh, this so is how, does. oh yeah. When we met, we met right at the beginning early COVID and he's like, what are you into? I'm like, I watched this stupid show called 90 day fiance. He started at episode one has watched it all along. Oh, he's the were, model you husband. Sh- you should have married this man. Oh, I did marry you this did. man. I, mean, I did. Oh, I was a very smart woman. I married this man. He knows all about you and Jake, but he's not a podcast person. You oh. guys actually got him kicked off of Twitter. What? <laughs> he, when we met in New York, he's like, did you tell them? And I'm like, I totally forgot because I was so oh, starstruck. Oh, my God. So right, when you guys had to cancel your show in Philly because you both had COVID, uh huh, we were going to see you. And he, you know, you posted on Twitter and he goes, COVID's a bitch ass slut ass whore. And that got mm. him kicked off Twitter. Oh, that was pre Elon Musk. <laughs> he can, he can come <laughs> back now. It's fine now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, no, he's left because because we're Jewish and. Elon Musk is a raging Elon Musk is like, oh, you're calling somebody a whore? That's fine. We're letting That's that fine. Mm-hmm. That's, That's fine. fine. As long as it's a Jew, it's fine. Oh, Jesus, we're we're still on there. Jew. I just wanted to delete it, but yeah, we're, yeah, we got that. But yes, you got you got my husband kicked off. Way Twitter to go, Matt. Way to go. Yeah. You know what? You're welcome. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Bitch, you're welcome. as whore is a phrase used in our house often. Anyway, that's Jovi and Yara. They talk. They they're gonna they're gonna be fine. I think they're gonna get a, they're getting a lot out of this experience. I do too. I do too. And Dr. Petey said in that interview that Yara was calling her like every day. I want. Yeah. He said Yara was one of the most responsive. People. And Yara Yara was on Dr. Petey. Yeah. And talk, her daughters. Talk for a minute about I just that. want to say because she said it's Petey. It's I say Dr. Petey. She said oh. I guess she's not a doctor. Okay. Oh, so okay. she told Petey. him she's like so anyway just Petey. We okay. call her Chicken Jenny, but okay. Yeah, yeah we exactly. call we call her Chicken Jenny therapist, mm-hmm. but yeah. with love, with love, with love, of course. She Yara was interesting because Yara went like she had no memory of her childhood from nine back. Mm-hmm. She had nothing there, mm-hmm. so they went back to that. Went back to a period where I think she was said she was four. Her grandmother died, and she was the one who was there alone mm-hmm. with her grandmother when she died. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, wow! And so her mother felt all of this guilt about it. So like mm-hmm. in previous lives, she met up with her mother and her grandma. Like she used to always feel this presence in the middle of the night. And it turns out it was her grandmother coming mm-hmm. back to visit her. Myla has been her guardian angel for many lives. Hmm. Oh, I bet that made her cry. Oh, I was bet she that sobbing? Because I'm cry. almost crying hearing about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't sobbing. But the, I mean, it was just, Interesting. Jovi, she met a couple of lives before oh, and he's been in and out. The reason she thinks she's so special, she thinks, is because she lived in the Vatican in a previous life. Mm. So she's like, I must have been really special because I lived at the Vatican. Wow. But yeah, it was really interesting. It was like an hour plus of their conversation. I did look at Petey's prices for a past life regression and it's $2,500. Oh. Four hours. Oh, well, oh Jake's Boodle's not, never going to pay that. I'm just saying Jake's that. never paying for that. When you I said you do it, I was like, Mm-mm. no, not that once he hears the price tag. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell him. I'm just going to let him experience it. That Because he's so cheap. He'll never yeah. pay that. You know what? I am cheap, too. I'm accused of being cheap, too. And mm. I'm always like, it's not the price. It's the principle of it. That's what Jake's. He will not pay that much. God, you're yeah. both such fucking Libras. <laughs> That's right. He That's... Whole, he'll say, it's a principle. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. God. I will yes. not pay $50 for that shirt. No way. Mm-mm. Not when I can get a TJ Maxx for 30 next week. Mm-mm. Okay. No, That's I'm not. I, I, nobody got time for that. 
Hey everyone, stay tuned. Little Miss Recap will be right back after these words. So we got Jovi Yard. Now let's talk Molly and Kelly. Okay. So th- th- this is finally the breakup. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank God. Because this has been so painful. We get more time with Dr. McCotty McCotthot, which Ooh. no one no one Ooh. on this call is sad about. I would no. watch him read the phone book. He, he is so hot. When he has the glasses a- on. Oh. Except oh. he's got real bad takes early on because he's like, I feel like there's a lot of hope for Molly and Kelly. I'm like, well, don't forget, none of them have watched this. True. But even in yeah. their first session, these two, like, they were so cold. <laughs> I'm like, sit by him. <laughs> sit by him in group therapy. I'm like, <clears throat> yeah. Well, I think when you're a couple therapist, you have to go in with optimism. You have so to why, like, you know. You, you probably talked about this on uh, prior episodes, but. Molly and Kelly, Kelly were the last minute add-ins, right? They yes. were. They're the replacement for Colty and Vanessa, which, which I'm very I, upset about. I think very. Colty probably would have done really fucking well with this. Mm-hmm. I'd I like do this too. is what they needed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm so upset he broke his leg on that trampoline. I hope he realizes <laughs> he's broke and then they come back. I do too. Day I need I because... need to see Colty wandering around this beautiful resort looking like he's straight out of Lord of yeah, the Rings it, with in his, his speedo. Beard. <laughs> speed up in the bad road so much and i i went into this in way too much detail previously but one of the things i love about colty is just how absurd he is like there's an absurdist element to him he'll mm-hmm. be like eating a tiny ice cream cone or like yeah, playing uh-huh. with a barbie doll in the corner and the fact <laughs> that he broke his leg on trampoline just mwah, chef kiss. <laughs> of course he did they said, they said they're never going into right they're never doing this again yeah, that's what we'll he said, see no, that's it. what they all say Mm-hmm. Sweet, sweet Matt Sharp money. Exactly. Yeah. That or that or Debbie and the Croatian Nazi are going to no. show up somehow. And so. No, we still need some of those old, like we don't have Nickel anymore. Pal, or uh, Paul and Karini are, they're just. They're no, they can never come back. They can't Nickel come back. on the single life is everything we would need. That's, I, God, I should have told Matt Sharp that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick, Nickel and um, Danielle. Of Danielle and Muhammad. Mm-hmm. Imagine mm-hmm. the two of them on the single life. Yes. And we always need Natalie. Yeah, mm-hmm. we always need Natalie. Mm-hmm. We think it's going to be um we Jake thinks it's gonna be Lydia, which yes. I'm not thrilled about. Um we do think it, uh, maybe not this season because they're still finishing the family Chantel, but we think eventually Chantel will be on the single I life. She'd be great. Um uh, but we, can't we think get enough this of mother next season, Chantel. we think winter is gonna be on it. Mm. Okay. I would like that. I enjoy her. It's going to be winter and uh, he's, he, let's see, Lydia, hopefully Natalie, um, Tyre, we think is going to be mm. on a single life. Oh, mm-hmm. bless. So that'll Aww. be interesting. Cause we were like, why are you at this party? You got COVID and couldn't go to the reunion. Mm. Like, that was so emblematic of Tyre's entire experience. <laughs> You're like, you didn't even have a girlfriend. You couldn't go to a tell all. You can't mm-hmm. really can't actually anything. do any of this mm-hmm. because you you just can't. So that's thing. who we're think. That's who we're thinking. You know, we're next week. We're you probably heard this, but if not, we're, I'm so excited. We're going to meet Anfisa next week. <gasps> yes, I heard that because you're going to okay. the pre- premiere of that Whatcha Woody show. Something yes. called like the Villains. I don't know how yeah. I fucking found her name. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know any, but there's like New York or Vegas or some reality stars named after cities. I don't know. <laughs> I don't watch any of those shows. Okay. All I know is, and I might bring my red makeup bag. You have to bring your red makeup bag. You have bag. to bring it. You have to bring it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to hear all. It's going to be funny, Matt, because everyone is going to be like to all the other people and you and Jake are just going to be on Anfisa. Yes. Like, you're the only one I know here. 100%. <laughs> you're the only one I care about. <laughs> only one. Exactly. Just have her scream at you. That'll be great. <sighs> so Molly's finally wearing a great outfit. She is not dressed well this entire time. And she finally looks really great for her breakup scene. When she shows, yeah, when she shows up at the end and she's got her little hat on and she's crying, I'm like, oh, you're adorable. I know. Adorable. I know. And finally, we're not seeing her bra sticking out. Mm-hmm. Um, so Matt, you don't know this. I did a fitting with Molly. So my tits look great. Thank you to Molly. Oh, did it? Did it work? It did. She mm-hmm. immediately like was like, oh, I see the problem. Your band is one size too big. Your cup is two sizes too small. Blah, blah. Sent me bras. They were great. Great. I don't know how the hell she does this, but it's amazing. I, uh, I love Molly. I, I do too. I, I, I'm rooting for her. The thing, I guess I'll just talk before you get into, but 
Sure. We got a little bit of specifics, but I feel like it was a little bit of a failure with this story in that I still don't fully know what happened. No, we I don't. Mean, the, the, the her talking about the hysterectomy help, that made sense. I went, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody drops you in that. That's a big thing. That's a letdown. I, I, so I'm interested to hear what are y'all theories of what happened in this relate because I a bitch doesn't know I don't know I think it has to do with money I think it has to do with money too I think mm -hmm. he had such an intense career as a New York cop mm -hmm. he finally could retire I'm sure he has a pension that's just enough for him to live on but not mm -hmm. live large mm -hmm. but enough that he doesn't have to work for a while and so I think well, he's the rest like, of his life that's his pension yeah I've worked my ass off I'm gonna sit my ass down for a while and Molly if nothing else is a go-getter she is yeah. a hustler. She is working her ass off. She's got her bra shop. She's now got her plexus bullshit. Like she is a hard worker. And I think the fact that he's just sitting there and he's, and she's working her ass off. I think that got old for her. I think the fact that he didn't contribute financially, I think she was expecting which, that. Which I don't know. If they live separately. Did. I don't know why right. she expects that. Right. Like you're just I, dating. Oh wait, they weren't living together. They were still no. living separately the whole time. They lived separately the whole time. He moved well, to Georgia. Part of what she, part of what came out last week, thanks to therapist Jovi, was she when he was getting ready to move to Georgia, he was sending her all these beautiful houses they were going to buy and these great apartments they were going to buy, and then something happened and he ended up moving to Georgia and getting himself a luxury apartment, and she was still in her house and she was really resentful of that, oh. and she brings it up he again. He didn't make it comfortable for her to spend the night. Maybe mm -hmm. he didn't make a room for Kinsley or something like that. God knows with everything that's been going on with Olivia, because we only know some of it. I'm sure that yeah. that drama wow. probably didn't help their relationship either. Wow. Um, but I think she expected him to show up and be like a very dutiful house husband, take care of stuff, take stuff off yeah. her plate. And one thing she said last time, which I think was really insightful and true is that like if you want me to sit down and relax with you you've got to take over some of the stuff that i have to do so i have that time to sit down and relax but like, i wonder if molly is so when people I think are, she might be capable of sitting down and relaxing right when she's not, like and i just know this because i'm this way too like even if i make enough money right i still mm -hmm. like i i still want to work and do more and accomplish more and be you know what i mean i'm always going yeah. And I feel like when someone's not, I don't understand that. Like I'm trying as I get older to give more grace to that kind of thing. But like, it doesn't make sense to me. I can't understand that. Like, why are you just sitting around when you could be doing X, Y, Z and blah, blah, blah. And I think that's where the disconnect is. Like, I think yeah. she maybe culturally, I don't know. She sees it as laziness and it's not. Yes. I mean, we talked about how he was a copy at one of the most traumatic and demanding jobs in this country and he deserves a fucking break. And he's probably just like, I need to chill. And she's seeing it as laziness. I think it's she's not resentful. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think that's so true that she sees it as lazy. By which, by the way, uh, Amy, I recommend knitting. Mm. That, that's what I, I don't do it as much now. But when I finished grad school and Jake and I, we lived with our, our friend Lindsay, who's the OG, we called her sissy. She was the OG sissy. Mm -hmm. Um, um, me with the three of us lived together. I finished grad school and I could not sit down. Mm -hmm. I, and Jake said, Jake would go, you need to light somewhere. You're driving me fucking crazy. <laughs> so I started, my therapist at the time did, did knitting and taught me how to knit. Mm -hmm. And that helped me. Like I could sit for like at least like an hour or two and work on okay. a knitting project. Mm -hmm. It was, but I felt like, cause I'm with you. I need to feel like I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. But that was the first time I went, I haven't sat and just watched TV for two hours in like 10 years. Mm, okay. And now so, it's your job. And now it's my job. So now I can't knit because I have to fucking work. But um, but you're taking anyway. notes. Like you're working while you're watching TV. Yeah. Anyway, that's just a little aside helpful. If yeah. somebody no, thank you. Crochet, thank you. that's yeah. easier. But um, I, there is, I think they're in different stages of their lives. Mm -hmm. I think you know, so too. Let, let's Molly is what I think Molly needs to hire a nanny and get a good deal though. I think that's mm. all she needs right now. Oh, I think I don't, Molly has a good deal. I think she has, she has a good yeah. deal. <laughs> but I, I don't, I don't think Molly needs to be in a relationship right now. Mm -hmm. I think that I she, this, uh, she's got a lot of grief. She needs to process because her relationship ended with Cynthia and that was a relationship. I've had friend oh, yeah. breakups and they're just as traumatic or more mm -hmm. than relationships. So, let her grieve that she's now in this space where 
she's got to not rebuild, but she's got like, you know, her and Cynthia, they were doing this podcast to get like, they were going to, they were, mm -hmm. they were, it would be like Jake and I are like, you know, it's like when you have those breakups, you've got to reformulate yourself yeah. into what that's going to be. And I think she's in that point of her life where she's about to be even busier because her mm -hmm. kids are older and that is just not Kelly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much of her personal and professional life was tied up into Cynthia. And I think that's a really good, good point because we all don't know what happened. We have ideas, but we don't know the details. And it's really Did that happen? Horrific. Did their well, breakup happen see. after Kelly moved to Georgia? I think so. Like, yeah. I wonder if there's some kind of Connection. something we're not saying or built resentment because it's of Cynthia something. Molly that, that needed to be on this show, not Kelly. Yes. yes. Cynthia yes. Molly. Yes. Yeah. But it'd be yeah. interesting to see what happens. Though Cynthia is a little problematic, I've learned mm. over time, but okay. I'll just let that go. Anyway, so we have got some delusion. Yeah. She's got some delusion and some lack of belief in science. So we'll just let that go. But finally, after the going back and forth, Molly felt future faked. Kelly didn't feel like Molly was validating their relationship to others. And finally, Dr. Hottie's like, Are you guys done? Like, can we be done with this? Are you done? Did Jovi and Yara? Can we be done with this? Can we be done with this, please? And Molly says it first, and then Kelly agrees, and he asks them to process it. And Molly says she felt she gave him a lot of herself. And Kelly says he cried a lot, and he's expressed how he felt, and he's just numb. And I remember that feeling of finally mm -hmm. being done and just being numb. Like I just can't even feel anything about this mm -hmm. anymore because I've felt it over and over again. And Molly apologizes for not giving him what he needed. He apologizes as well. They say they tried their best. Dr. Mm -hmm. Hottie wishes them well. Then Kelly's packing. And man, he, he I'm not a great post-vacation packer, but this triggered me. He's just like throwing <laughs> shit everywhere. <laughs> and like, okay. that's oh what I God. do. That's what yeah. I do. Because I just wash it all when I come home. So I, I just it too, it I at least hold it. I just pretend mm -hmm. like I'm doing it. It's, I don't know. I'm compulsive. I also still iron. So don't <laughs> trust me. I I separated them into the compartments. So one side is my dirty and the other side mm. is my cleans that are left. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See, my, Matt, we're Pisces. You understand me. How long, when you come home, when do you unpack? Pretty much right away. Same. Mm. Unless it's, unless I get home super late at night. Yeah. Then yeah, I'll yeah. do it the then next I... day. But yeah, it's never going to be, my suitcase when... will not be filled for 24 hours within my return of home. Amy, mm -hmm. what about you? Oh, right away. Right away. Oh, oh, because I didn't know if it's a Luber thing. Jake will like it'll be five days. Well, it's hard because I've I don't travel a lot alone. So I normally have four other suitcases to unpack or three oh, okay. other suitcases yeah, to unpack. So I just yeah, start immediately. Yeah. yeah. It's I, I used to travel a ton for work, so I'd always have to be flipping it over. So I think I just got uh, that habit. So mm. anyway. Kelly packs me and he trigger packs me packs and he triggers packs me. me. Whoa. <laughs> Kelly oh. takes me home with him. That's All exciting. Right. All right. And Molly comes in to say she's sorry, and it was actually kind of a sweet moment. I'm glad she came and they it and was. walked out together. Mm -hmm. I thought this little dig of this is our last walk. It may not be down the aisle, but it's our last walk together. I was like, Aah. I mean, I didn't have the sweet and fuzzies because then they really and we. I don't think we have time for it, but that really got nasty on social media. Oh, I did oh, not did see this. Oh, it, it wasn't. Mm. Molly didn't say a word, but kind of. This is why I do really feel for Molly, um, and why she doesn't because basically this relationship was ending at the same time as Cynthia. So she okay. was going through two breakups, and then mm -hmm. I think Olivia was also. I think it's been pretty that Olivia is, is dealing with like is it meth addiction? Yeah, so she's in meth. which is unbelievably that Molly had just that is alone. Mm -hmm. And then she's yeah. dealing with the friend and then Kelly breakup and all this stuff. There was all this stuff that, you know, Olivia Kelly was saying, Olivia said racist things about him, but a lot of people forget mm -hmm. that even though she doesn't look at Olivia is half black. And so she was mm -hmm. speaking like in a, their own community and Kelly mm -hmm. was taking that out. Blah. There was all this. And at the same time, Cynthia's posting stuff about, coded stuff about her and molly and i gotta say molly didn't say one fucking mm -hmm. word at least Good what i her. saw yeah. yeah so i just i don't know i feel like that speaks a lot of times when there's drama is who's actually who's screaming from the mountain top listen to me listen to me and who's mm -hmm. just waiting it out yeah and i agree i agree 
There's you something don't say about... anything, and then you go slash their tires in the middle of the night. That's, That's what, what Amar, Amar would do. That's, That's what Amar, Amar do. does. Yeah, mm-hmm. we do. I, my mother, see, my mother even has a better way of doing it. She doesn't want to destroy property. Her idea is to go let the air out of all four of your tires. Mm. So it's not like true vandalism, but it's just enough to drive someone nuts. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah One fair. tire's not enough. You can fix that with your spare, but all four? Take out, take out the wiper blade in their windshield wipers. Oh, that'd be good. So they go, yeah. Just the fun. sound alone just, would be yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Teeth hurt when I hear that. Mm. Exactly. It's like fingernails on a blackboard. Mm. Mm. Okay. I will now, say Molly in that dress by the door, like, can I walk with you? It was like a scene out of Steel Magnolias, and I was here for it. Was. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. sweet. And they gave sweet. a nice hug. I noticed, though, that um, uh, Kelly let go first mm. of the hug. He, he's done. He was done I, first. He's done. I, I will say it does seem, I don't want to say his fault, her fault, that shared responsibility, but it does seem like Kelly doesn't want to talk about things. No. There's something, and, and the you plot. alluded to this earlier, Matt, there's something that they're not saying. There's yeah. something they're not saying. A hundred percent. And maybe Kelly's too much of a gentleman to say it. And maybe Molly just wouldn't say it. I don't know, but they're not saying something. Something big is under the surface that we don't mm-hmm. know about. Mm-hmm. Um, but from what we do now, I just think they're lifestyle wise, they're incompatible. There are yeah. different places yeah. in their life. Yep. That's why age doesn't matter nearly as much as station in life for a relationship. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, did you guys That's see, why? speaking of age, Dane Cook got married to like an 18 year old, 20 year old or Jesus something? Christ. Shocker. <laughs> Shock. God, can men just. <laughs> be better at first i was like at first i was like he's 51 and she's 24 and although that's bizarre and gross i'm like we've seen worse than that right oh. I mean, we've... DiCaprio. but then it said <laughs> he married her after a six-year relationship and i was like "Ooh, oh that's <laughs> real problematic oh. oh yeah so they're oh. calling they're calling them the bride and the groomer oh no yes yeah yeah, yeah. After well, Christopher Jamal Evans married that twenty six year old, mm. I don't, uh, I I can't trust anything because because Captain America is a gross man too. Yeah, how I don't understand. I'm, I'm, Although maybe I'll do that. Maybe if I get rich one day, I'll be like, fuck it, I'm gonna date a Giff in this shit and be a little twink, date a twenty five year old prostitute. <laughs> Why not? Go for a it. Sex worker. What? No, he was a porn actor. I'm sorry. That's okay. fine. Good for mm-hmm. you, Geffen. I was, I'm 50 years old. No, you're 50. I'm 50. Oh, you have Kenny skincare routine. <laughs> when I tell you I have Kenny skincare routine, I have no skincare routine. I barely I even either. ever wash my face. I, I am, I am lucky. I do not I, look 50, but I can't imagine I, dating I, someone who's in their twenties. Like what would we even talk about? Yeah. You know, I have one friend and he's dating someone that, is closer in age to his son than him. Mm-hmm. And we teased him mercilessly. He's in, he's 50, like three. And his partner, I think is like 28, 29. Mm-hmm. And, but he is kind of a big kid and he's always been a big kid. Mm, so, okay. and he's that works always for somebody still, like that. Yeah. So I think if you've got that personality, I don't think Leonardo DiCaprio is a big kid. <laughs> no. Or Dane I think- Cook. <laughs> Uh, speaking of, let's go to Kalani and Asuelu, shall we? <laughs> um, Kalani, Asuelu, and Colini are having a family session with Dr. Janie. Or what were you calling her last week? Dr. Janie, because I'm a crazed West Wing fan. And I was, was doing it not even realizing. Oh, I didn't even know. I was oh, like, wow. Dr. Janie, like Allison Janie, because there's oh, only wow. one Janie on the planet. But yeah, no, Dr. So Janie Janie. They're forced to play Jenga, and they're handed... The easiest, laziest metaphor. I am enraged over this metaphor. <laughs> and what is enraging about the metaphor is that Kalani was so impressed by it. That, that, oh, that, I'm, so impre- I'm like, girl. Okay, I gotta say though, it you gotta meet someone where they are, and I think yes. They, and I say this with. <laughs> I don't know if it's love, but all the I don't want to be shameful, but. It's a Swaylu. 
Yeah, how, that's how true. Deep can, how deep that's can you true. go with the metaphors that's with the Swayla? That's you got to keep that's it true. real simple. Mm-hmm. You got to mm-hmm. keep it real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Swayla they... could not handle the box of sixty four. We need to give him eight crayons. That's all he can oh, do. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. They did Nothing act more. like it was like um, the first time that it. They they acted like the way uh, white people felt about Robin D'Angelo in twenty twenty. Just like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I'm racist. Fuck. Right. <laughs> fuck. <sighs> what the fuck? And, that, and that's how they were with this goddamn Jenga game. They were just like. <laughs> Whoa! I was enraged. I was enraged. I I was like, Dr. Janie, how dare you? Do better. (laughs) See, I got it. I've been there. You got to go where, yeah. Yeah. So Kalani says, and I just kind of made bullet points here. Kalani knows she tells Kalini too much. Kalini and Asuelu are barely speaking, and Kalani was the only one who knew about the cheating, and she had to essentially be the trauma sponge for Kalani as she was getting through this. Now, I want to talk about one thing real quick. Kalani is sobbing. Kalini, I'm sorry, is sobbing in her confessionals Mm -hmm. about her sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one amongst the three of us who's a sister, and I'm pretty close to my sister, I would not be sobbing about this. Like I might be enraged, I might be emotional, but the way she's sobbing speaks to that enmeshment. That they is are so wild. enmeshed. It's they wild. Are, they are the same person. And yes. they're or they act like they're the same person. Yes. And it's it's a lot. And I would say that I feel like Darcy and Stacy have more identities than Kalini and Kalani. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. I agree. They are that. more differentiated than Kalini yeah, and Kalani. Differentiated. That's a better like, word for it. Yeah. Like even Poodle, Maddie, like if you were to tell us like Poodle was, you know, screwed over by some guy and it really hurt him and blah, blah, blah. Like, would you be sobbing while you were telling us? You might be angry. You might be emotional. No. But she's sobbing, sobbing like it no, happened to her. Sob- no, Poodle told when I got fucked over, Poodle immediately didn't get sad. He, he started Googling <laughs> to ruin his credit report. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Poodle started well doing. Deserved. Like well normally, deserved. it's kind of like an anger. Maybe the tears yeah. were anger ragey. I don't know, but it seemed. Well, they like- all, we do call them tears of Kalani for a reason. <laughs> oh, yes, man. it just seemed like Kalani was acting like this happened to her, and I was like, "Oh, you girls are Kalini." Hmm. Mean- Kalini yeah, so I you think- guys are. <laughs> I think I just want to, for me, I'm just, I don't know fully, uh, you know, backdoor, backdoor, your backdoor peeps, backdoor people, <laughs> backdoor, backdoor friends, backdoor friends. <laughs> backdoor friends, your BDFs, um, yeah, your backdoor friends or sissies can, that are Mormon can comment on this, but we have mm-hmm. to remember the context of how they were raised. True. They yeah. were raised in, uh, in Utah and Mormon, like, mm-hmm. so, and also Samoan culture mm-hmm. on top of mm-hmm. that. Uh, women don't, women internalize, women don't speak, women don't have a voice. So I think when you feel, um, when you feel emotionally castrated, sometimes the only thing you can do is silently cry because you can't feel angry. You can't feel these kind of these emotions of these emotions of action are Mm -hmm. not available to you or you don't think they are. They, Hmm. They were raised in keep sweet. I don't know what level. So is this sacred loneliness? Uh, uh, Is Kalani trying to get around (laughs) the sacred loneliness of of Cody Brown? Brown? Yes. Oh yeah, I remember. We watched that episode. That motherfucker. That motherfucker. motherfucker. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, he's bad. But like, I don't know how much you know. Father Chinbraid enforced that keep sweet, but that's the church Mm, they grew up in. Mm, You don't say much. I want to be in the room. When Father Chinbraid learns Watches that Asuelo has been fucking all along someone else, mm-hmm. me- literally or metaphorically, because I that bridge where um, Asuelo almost disappeared, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. we might revisit this bridge. It's like, and I don't a, think it'll be an almost this it's time. It's like when you go for a drive with Papa Silva, you don't know if you're coming back. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. Father no. Chinbraid will take you out. Oh God, can we get Father Chinbraid and Asuelo's mother to mm. do it out? I want oh. money. Money's what money, I want. What, what I want. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, who know? Maybe they're prepping. You know, there are, do people do think, I think it'd be too soon, but we're wondering, is Kalani going to be on the single life? I don't know. Or is she Swaylor? with Mr. Hall J. Pass in real life, Amanda? Do we know? We don't know. I think we don't that, know. 
I think that's what we're going to find out next week is that she's actually still seeing Hall J pass. That's she's our name for him. Feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. I don't, don't want to jump okay. ahead. Okay. <laughs> so um, by the time, so what we learn is by the time Kalani figured out all the cheating that he had done in Semwa, is that where he was when he was cheating yeah. first? Yes. Um, she wanted to protect, she was already pregnant. And so she wanted to protect like him from what her family would think. So she just decided, I'm not going to tell anybody about this except my trauma sponge over here, Colini. Colini, yeah. So then once he was here, she thought it would be over, but he started now. This is, this gets a little gray because I'm not convinced he cheated. It depends. This is personal to every relationship. It depends yeah. on what your boundaries are with your partner. But she says once he was here, he reached out to girls on Instagram, was talking to them, and then he bought naked pictures. And then he went back home and got the thrush on the tongue. Right. To me, the picture piece isn't cheating in my relationship. Right. But we but, don't know. Well, we mm-hmm. don't know what their agreements are. And she mm-hmm. did grow up Mormon. So I imagine her ideas of of sharing intimacy are probably slightly more slightly smaller than say ours i would say conversations with people especially of a sexual or intimate nature would be cheating to me yeah Mm -hmm. for me it's emotional component yes yes all right so uh dr janey says when you hear to asuela when you hear the pain that your wife experienced and knowing colini was the only support what do you want to say to them he starts to cry and there's such she she says it later but there's such shame in him Mm -hmm. He says, it's all true, and I have a lot of issues because my parents didn't teach me, and I don't have experience. So Kalini says, Kalani says, I'm sorry, she she knows there's a strong cultural component to this, so she thought getting him to America would help. She says when she's in Samoa, like, people are hitting on her, people are hitting on his married friends are hitting on her, his married friends are hitting on Kalini, like, everybody, it's it's a misogynistic culture, that's what it's set up for, and it's, it's, it's respected there and so um she's you know just he's so young yeah he's kind yeah. of like this is what i grew up with like i don't know anything else and that kind of made me feel bad for him it made me feel bad for him too I, this was enlightening to learn more about some yeah. culture mm-hmm, culture mm-hmm. we we enjoy all the trash of all these people but the mm-hmm. thing i love most about 90 day is learning about all these different cultures and it's how still tlc amanda it's the learning it's the, channel thank mm-hmm. you thanks mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We learned things today. We learned about Samoan culture, but it really made it a lot. It shed a lot of light on his behavior. I agree. Yeah. We're watching the, uh, we're just finishing the fourth season of Hey, and then we'll do family Chantel on our like page on our RG plus, but, mm-hmm. um, it's good. We'll be finally caught up on everything 90 day, but we would watch the, if you watch the, we've been watching the earlier seasons of them and going, what is the deal? Asuelu was never given a fair chance from the get go. Because right. we watch mm-hmm. the older hat, when we watch the mm-hmm. later happily, we're like, he's an idiot. What she she? But you watch yeah. the younger ones, and you're like, the family never gave this guy a chance. He was Mm-mm. doomed from the start. And now I went, oh well, that's why. Because again, I think their relationship is such a good. Um, and for people watching this, if you want to learn from this and recognize. If you internalize and never speak to anything, this is what happens. This yeah. is what happens. And it's this idea of like so young where, because I used to be this way. I've been in this way in relationships. Well, I don't need to communicate my needs to someone. I don't need to. But if a Swelu just sees in America, we're different, then right. he'll change people. And that is, that is not how people change. It has to be like, Active, active, continuous collaboration, compromise, mm-hmm. conversations to get someone to break out of their cultural norm is a mm-hmm. very difficult thing to do. And you you teach someone how to love you. Yeah. Yes. She never taught him how she, didn't she know how to be to loved. Be, she didn't know how. I mean, I didn't either. I this is my third Same. year. Third time's the charm. I finally was able to be like, Same. oh, I can say to my partner, these are the things that I need. These are the mm-hmm. things that I don't need. When new things come up, we talk about whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But this whole idea that if someone loves me enough, they'll just know what I need or know what I want. Y'all, I'm telling you that if you're listening right now and you're like, <laughs> I think 
you, I, you're a dumb bitch because I've been yeah. a dumb bitch too. Yeah, I'm telling absolutely. you. Absolutely. We've all been that dumb now, bitch. If not, you tell somebody you happen. need something and they still don't do it, that's a whole different story. Oh, that different is. Story. They've been told. Uh, so, for example, my my greatest offense that Asuelu has ever uh, committed is <laughs> when, <laughs> and this I is such an it. American perspective. But they're getting out of the car. They pull up with all the kids. They're getting out of the car. He gets out of the car and walks in the door and shuts it. And Kalani's out there. She's got the kids hanging off her. She's getting her purse. She's doing. And I'm always like, how could he not help her with those kids? But why would he? He probably never saw that ever no, growing ever. up. Ever. Yeah. So why would it occur to him? And so I do realize, like, I have to give him a little bit of grace there. But you know, also hashtag never forget. <laughs> never forget. And I think though the way he was, he wasn't ever taught because if you look at uh, uh, P- Papa Chinbraid, um, he, the way he has taught his girls and probably his son to do things is through shame and fear. Yep. Yeah. 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 I would they love don't, neither get- of them operates from a place of love. They both operate from a place of fear. Yeah. I would love to get eyes on that marriage, Papa Chinbraid marriage. Like I need, I need insider well, information I, there. I need some, cameras installed. Some- yeah, there's been some drama there. Yep. They're, I mean, they've lived separately for like years. One lives yeah, in Utah, he's, the other one in California. It's, like, you spot it, you got it. I think yeah. the mm-hmm, reason he doesn't, mm-hmm. he's worried about Asuelu cheating is because he's fucking did it too. I'm, mm-hmm. sure. I'm um, sure. I don't know where you originated. You spot it, you got it. But I know you say it all the time. And I say it all the time. I'm always like, my friend Matt Marr always says, you spot it, you got it. I'm telling everybody <laughs> that. It's like, she's like a spiritual teacher. For her. her name's Kelsey Patel. She's on okay. Instagram and stuff like that. And so she said it once to my friend, Don McCoy, who a lot of people know. I've talked mm-hmm. about my godson, Waylon. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did a lot of things with her. And so that when she said that, I went, oh, that is so true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and we're all annoyed by the things that we hate most about ourselves that we see in other people. Yep. Yeah. The more yeah, annoyed, the more annoyed I am at somebody, I'm mm-hmm. always like, okay, wh- mm-hmm. where is this showing up in me? That this mm-hmm. is Wait, bugging me so much. Am I much. triggered by JP because I wear American <laughs> flags all the time? No, I can tell you why you're triggered by JP. You're triggered by JP because he reminds you a lot of the guys you grew up with. Yeah. 100%. And mm-hmm. the guys yeah. you had crushes on mm-hmm. who you were afraid mm-hmm. of. Mm-hmm. Whoa. All right. Amanda just leveled me, everyone. <laughs> all right. <laughs> No, that's what it is, though. Izzy wow. reminds me of the guys I grew up with. Yeah. Absolutely. He really does. Okay. So they're in this uh, confessional together. And she's like, I have so much love for you. And you'll always be in the boys' lives. And you'll always be in my life, no matter what happens. And I just wrote, she's done. She's that, done. Yeah, that is that is the speech I, you give yeah, when you are done. done. Yeah. And I was telling Amanda. Ka- oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, when Kalini even said, I'm not mad at you. I, I went, oh, they're both done. They're mm-hmm. both done. Um, I was telling Amanda last week, there was this real weird thing that Kalani was doing in her confessionals when she was with Asuelu and they were talking about sex and she was calling him bro all the time. Dude or bro? Dude. Bro. Dude. Oh, no, bro. Yeah. Bro? Bro. Yeah. You have a nice dick, bro. Yeah. You have a nice ass, bro. And I was like, oh, you're, she's done. You're obsessed with my vagina, she's bro. No, she's no. done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. then we have uh, next time on, Miss Gwen has entered the chat and she Woo-hoo! is reading Joby for filth in front of you. Oh. And we love it. We love it. I love it. Um, oh. Molly tells the group that Kelly left and Kalani goes missing. Or Kalini, go- Kalani. Kalani goes missing. That's it. Yeah. And and there's more to the Hall J Pass story. Yes. Kalini says you need to tell the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So oh, there's going to be more to that. He, uh, she's, in love, she's in love with this dude. Mm-hmm. I... Mm-hmm. And or she's in lust, at least. She's in lust at a minimum. sucks because I don't know how much Kalani's going to change. Mm-mm. Yeah. Because she she's jumping be in. Mm-hmm. She yeah. needs to be alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And go to therapy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Go to, to yep. therapy. Therapy. Go to therapy. Get, mm-hmm. herself therapy a real, yes. get herself a real job so her entire life isn't based on this television show. Like feeding her children mm-hmm. is no longer mm-hmm. tied to this TV show. Mm-hmm. Go get a job at an office. Put your kids in daycare. Like, just Doesn't focus she have on an OnlyFans, or is that just Leany that has the OnlyFans? I think fans? it's just Leany who does. Yeah, I oh. think so, too. Um, so, Maddie, tell us, we can have a quick discussion. Who would you like to see on season two of this, besides Andre and Libby? Because they have to be on it. Boy. The really whole family Libby could on be on it, but. The we could just have a season Libby. of the whole family Libby. <laughs> who? I'm trying to. Oh, man. Okay. I'm trying, Amanda, I'm who are some of the people that we were thinking? Say? I'm trying to think. Who were we thinking? We were thinking 
like the ob- a lot of the obvious ones were not. We thought Kelly and Kobe could be interesting. Um, Kobe and who? Kobe and not Kelly. What the hell? Not is her Kelly. Name? No, Emily. 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 Kobe I mean, and Emily. I could see them. Uh, I don't want them to be, but I could see them. Uh, I could see them having Russ and Powell. Mm. I don't want Russ and Powell. I don't want them. Um, and I don't I, want Jasmine and Gino. No more. No more. I love Jasmine and Gino, but I think I don't, they'd be great. I'm done. I don't know if they need to be. I I don't know if it would help at all, and I don't necessarily <laughs> want to see him. But I think Shida and Bilal could be. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brandon and Julia was an interesting one to me because mm. I think I think. I think oh, probably yeah. a lot of their issues have to do with his parents and that level of of family enmeshment. So that could be interesting. Yeah. Um uh yeah, they could you know, because we they act like they're on again, off again. We don't really know. Um sometimes I mean that we, we uh, but I would love to see Natalie and Mike. Yeah. Or Natalie and whoever the hell she's dating at that point. <laughs> Anyone. But, I like Big Mike, though. I think, yeah. I think Mike would be good. Because if, if, like, if we could teleport Butter in. And, mm. and oh. where is Uncle Bo? Where is Uncle he's Bo? He's running the we, perimeter. Can, he's yeah. running the perimeter of that house. Mm-hmm. Um, I, You know who probably, I don't know how many much problems they have, but uh, give me Rebecca and Zied. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I love me some. I just love yes. Rebecca just stressed out, biting the corner of her cheek. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, oh. Shirts on with her yes. al- altered pictures. I love it. Her, and, her entire it. house with just his face all over it. Mm-hmm. Misha uh, and Ni- Nicola would be interesting. Mm, you mean oh. Hunter Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I'm trying to. My formerly my traffic girl. Misha was the Philadelphia traffic girl. There we go. Yeah. You know who else? Brandan. Brandan and, oh, Brand and Mary. Dan. Oh, they're, they're, but they're dropped. You know who I actually could see them having is Robert and Annie. Mm, oh. That'd be interesting. And they, yeah. you know, I know they, they're, they're like pillow talk darlings, mm-hmm. but they, you know, they had a miscarriage. Like they, mm-hmm. really they lost a had child. Work, yeah. They've had some trauma together. And um, I would love, I would love, but just, I sometimes wish uh, Natty Day would bring back like, like Melanie and Devar. Like bring back the old people we oh, haven't seen in yeah. forever. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I have Devar for a lot of reasons. <laughs> yes. But yes. you know, uh, you know, just I would love them to bring back some people we haven't seen in forever. And she's how, the only one about... who represented Pennsylvania well. Well, Melanie. Oh, yeah. How about um Darcy and Stacy? Do we want them together or Darcy and Georgie and Stacy and Florian? Uh I would love that. Florian. I don't. I don't think they'll do it. I think they're <sighs> kind of of the mindset of we have our own show now, and they yeah. want to do something mm-hmm. that is separate yeah. of Ninety Day Fiance, which makes mm-hmm. me sad because that's because Darcy looking for love. What we, she loves love, and that's yeah. what we all want to see. Yes, but and I don't Darcy think is like somebody who would take really well to therapy. We saw she went to one session and, was and she cured. got cured. Yeah. So I think she, she would, would take well. Yeah, she um, would. I, but maybe you know. I could see uh, Alexi and Lauren on the show. I don't know oh, yeah. what they would have to do. Yeah. But... yeah. Oh, he's hot. Oh, oh he's so pretty. Oh, such a pretty Jake man. Gets, he gets triggered by something with Lauren, but I love Lauren. I love oh, Lauren I like too. I didn't too. like her at first, but now her I really first season, like her. she was bratty. She was so bratty, mm-hmm. but I like her now. Yeah. Yeah. I like her and... too. Um, oh, I meant we... to tell you too. Oh, um, when we were talking about single life, people I'd want to see on single life would be, Oh, I just had it. Oh, um, Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yes. I would love Bali. to see Kim, Kim Bali on, on the single mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, yeah. Could, she could start marketing more. What Matt, what could she sell more of her? Um, hello. If you uh, feel like you're not smelling fresh and you want to be your best, <laughs> then please buy a bottle of my super blossom body splash. And, <laughs> Please, it's been a while and it expires in two months. So it's not gonna smell good. But right now it smells like jasmine and rose petals and desperation. If you, Thank if you. you wanna, I needed wanna, that. If you wanna be like, just spray some super balls and butter splash and show that you're a super fan and you can smell like me, Kimberly. Yes. Kimberly. 
I want to see Usman and Michael dating around Nigeria. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we all know, Matt, that your favorite character of mine that you do is Dildo Swaggins. I mean, there is no <laughs> compar- comparable character, in my opinion. Yes, I- yes. <laughs> have I been summoned? Did I hear my name? <laughs> From the from the depths of Mordor. Oh, dildo, just, we missed you so much. Dildo, dildo. swaggins. Um, <laughs> my so, brother. Stop, mom. I'm <laughs> talking to my friends, mom. Jared, stop it. <laughs> my my brother in law's named Jared, so every time that comes up, it makes me laugh. <laughs> this is the first time I spoke to two. Gorgeous women in a long time. A, I, I promise I do not have a, 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 an erect sword at all. Dildo, are you a rogue or a mage? What are you this week? Uh, I, right now I'm feeling quite roguish looking at these two lusty wenches before me. <laughs> Oh my God! Can we take Matt? You, you come up here. We're gonna take you to the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair, mm. and we're gonna let you dildo swaggins it all um, over the Ren never, Fair. I've never been to a Ren Fair. But oh, we have a good thing. one. Here's the thing: I cannot, for the life of me, remember which character dildo swaggins came out of. Who was it? Andrew and what's her bucket? The French woman it who got was, stuck. Yeah, I was gonna say Eliza would remember. Yeah, it was so Andrew. he is who we Andrew. need. They are who we need on <laughs> last resort. Oh, 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 yeah, that idiot. They're still together? I don't no, know. Then no. we need him on Single Life so that Maddie can do dildo swagons. Ah. Uh, well, fucking around town. You <laughs> know I, how sad it was. He had to be at that resort while she was stuck in a Mexican prison. I mean, it was hard for him. It was it really was rough for, for him. him. It was very hard for him. <laughs> uh, there's also, you know, speaking of love in paradise, so is that you bring mm. I can see Danielle and Johan on this. Oh. But he would have to be able to come to Florida. Uh, or I'm sorry, Johan, a miserable bitch. Yeah, um, I, I could watch that. <laughs> I wouldn't love that. Um, I also could see what was her name with the really tight curly hair and the guy died in his sleep next to her and she dated the guy. And then they oh yeah, the woman from Seattle. Seattle, and he was from that weird oh, island. Oh, and she had Columbia. a pizza place. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. She brought him fishing. to the pizza yeah, place. They, they had a lot of communication problems. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Also, and plus, she um, faked that she was moving there, despite the fact that yeah. she didn't pack a single thing. I, I'm telling you, I don't want like the normies. I don't want everybody <laughs> that we all know. Like, give us two of those, but bring us the dregs of people we I forgot think about. Stephanie with her sip wine. Oh, oh, Stephanie. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't think Stephanie. she's going to be on anymore because she's racist. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. she's got some problems. She there. did say the N-word or something terrible <gasps> like that. Yeah, that's why oh, she got canceled. My. Oh, She my said God. that, but then at the same time was saying that she was sexually harassed on the show. Oh, yeah, she okay, was awful. Yeah, she's not coming oh. back. She had too the much sleep. The one that shocked me was the fact that um, Farchar Stephanie was so boring. Mm, yeah, so boring on a on single life. Yeah, she was they they only had her on because women's husbands want to have sex with her. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, she's so, hot, she's gorgeous, and mm-hmm. she's the one person who has monetized the shit out of this this opportunity. Yeah, yeah she's, done that she's, done well. she's done it. She has a girl boss, sweat. but yeah. So, um, Maddie, thank you so much for doing this. Yes, we this has been a joy. So much. I mean, Little Miss Recap is still the little podcast that could. And we appreciate you giving us a little bit of love. Oh, well, I love you. I love you both. And so you both make me laugh. So anytime, anytime. So what are you, what are you covering besides everything over at Reality (laughs) Gaze? You work so much work. How was the Golden Bachelor? How was the Golden Bachelor? Oh, I'm loving it. I love it because I, it's just not, first of all, Jake and I can't get over the fact that they use songs by real people. Oh, yes. Oh, Ooh, real I know that. The I've watched the, I've watched the Bachelor mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and the Bachelorette. Uh, I'm still mad at. Uh, I love Avon. I'm still mad at Rachel for that. But whatever. Oh, oh, Avon's so hot. <laughs> um. Anyway, but you just. But there's a difference when you watch a show that you're going to recap. You're like you're taking mm-hmm. notes, and I'm like, 
wait a minute, is this a journey song? This I'm so used to 90 day fiance and like love is blind, like royalty free shit. Yes, yes. And so where literally it says pond five in the middle of the recording, like they didn't yes. yeah, pond five. So I, I am, um, but it's, they did well. They picked the casting, picked the right bachelor. He's mm-hmm. actually, they could have gone like old creepy man. Mm-hmm. He's not mm-hmm. that at all. Like I felt emotion and tears the first episode. I saw the a women, trailer and I was like, I like this guy. The women are fantastic. They casted like, like some crazy, some heartfelt. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a great season. Um, okay. And it's, a joy to watch it because it just feels new and fresh for us and yeah. uh, <laughs> hopeful because we're just watching relationships die on 90 day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Brandan and Brandary, you're just like, fuck. Oh, Jesus every time. Christ. So, yeah. Golden, so Golden Bachelor is that they we're also this season of Love After Lockup is good. I like, only love watched it. one episode. I have to catch up. I have to catch oh, up because okay. I think it's we're on good. three. It is four. We're four. Renika is bringing it to a. That girl is cray cray, and it's. I'm here for it. I love her so much. And Louie and Malui, and she. She's like, we're gonna have sex in my high school cheerleading outfit with Louie. Louie and his three teeth. Jesus Christ, he looks so rough. And Chelsea, like, oh, anyway, so she's the only one I love. Chelsea, yeah, I'm here for her. So we're doing that. We're also doing all of Love Is Blind. So Mm -hmm. we put the first episode episode by episode. Yeah, we yeah, do all yeah. of that. So yeah. we're dropping Love is Blind and lo- and then our regular right now, like we're on um, classless or classic 90 Day Fiance. Um, and I think I mm. think that's all that we're doing you, right you now. You're just working so much work. You are working it's so really much work. It's really Matt Sharp. It's because Matt Sharp is airing three episodes of 90 Day Fiance. Like the trailer for the final so chapter weird. of The Family Chantel looks amazing, but we're not covering it because we're going to do that. A, we don't have time, and we're doing it back. Story. So. Uh, you saw who's back. You saw the trailer, and you saw E Scott is back, Scott. right? Scott. Yeah. And Pedro. He's gone right? off the rails. Have you <laughs> have you seen him posting about the fact that he didn't get invited to the party that you went to, Matt? And like, I heard he is he is so off the rails. This man is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh, he's so gross. He's so, he's so gross. He's so um, gross. Amanda, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? uh instagram as always occasionally i get to be with um matt's good friends and our good friends uh michelle of blighty day i've joined her a number of times love them which has been a ton of fun and it's very funny robin and i are creating this whole relationship despite the fact that we've never spoken to Mm. each other it's kind of funny Mm -hmm. he's getting a little uh, protective of his wife and i can't i can't infringe on their marriage apparently (laughs) darn darn. i'll do my best so Mm -hmm. yeah that's where you can find me all right guys thank you so much and you can follow the show you can find me on amy archer writer on instagram the show's at little miss recap um jump in backdoor friends we have a lot of fun back there anal lovers welcome anal lovers welcome whatever bring the fuck machine we're all friends that's right you just get on in there we don't care Mm -hmm. all right and thank you so much for listening and we'll see you soon take care everyone